My God, is it cold outside? Holy crap, man! What? Almost 29 degrees outside, dude. Jesus Christ. Where I live at, that's crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> What's good, y'all? It is your boy Coltrane back with another video. And today is going to be your official Monday Night Raw review results for 11 12 2018. Thank you so much for joining me, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you guys hit that like button. Subscribe to the down below if you're new. Turn on those post notifications and comment down below what you guys thought. A Monday Night Raw. Today I'm going to be reviewing Monday Night Raw to go home show the Survivor Series. Then I'll also be doing my WWE 2K19 Universe Mode Raw after Hell in a Cell. As we're going to be building towards Survivor Series starting today in my Universe Mode. Five week build um, for Raw and four weeks for SmackDown Live. Since they're going to be hosting No Mercy this Sunday uh, coming up um, this week. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Follow my universe mode fans. But other than that, man, let's talk. Let's get back to down to business here with this Monday Night Raw review. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, man. This show was not bad at all. Not bad at all. It, it, it had its terrible moments, which we always be 50 50 down below. But this was a an okay go home show. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. It was, it was a okay go home show. It wasn't great. It wasn't bad. It was okay. Okay, go home show. Not gonna moan and complain like I usually do because the man, my girl Becky, had uh, showed y'all why she, she should be Ronda Rousey at Survivor Series, which we'll go over later on in the review. But let's get started off with Monday Night Raw, man. We kick things off with a Raw Tag Team Battle Royal, or not. We Raw Tag Team Division kicked off this week's show with a Battle Royal to determine the captains for the tag team. For Survivor Series, what does the captain have to do with the Survivor Series team? Like, hey, like, like, can you guys ask me, well, what does the captain do? Nothing. It serves no purpose for your Survivor Series team at all. Why are we even having a matchup to begin with to, to crown the captain? All of you guys may be in the same match. So what's the point? It makes no sense. This was just to build up Braun Strowman. That's all it was. Braun Strowman's music played as the action started, and the monster woman walked to the ring where he laid waste to every one of the attendants. Strowman ran around the ringside area, bulldozing anyone in his path, grabbing a steel tray, turning the tee off. Anyone ridiculous enough to stick around? No one did. The big man grabbed the mic to address the WWE Universe and general manager Baron Corbin. Strowman said he was done playing and that he wanted Corbin to come get these hands. Stephanie McMahon answered, oh my goodness, and informed Strowman that he could not hold Raw hostage. She tried to talk him into representing Team Raw, but he cut her off saying that he does not give a damn about her brother Shane. Stephanie said she gives a damn, so and so everyone else on Raw. <laughs> and so should everyone else on Raw. Just because Stephanie, man, you give a damn about Survivor Series does not mean everybody on Monday Night Raw has to give a damn about Survivor Series. Because I'm pretty sure not that many people care about Survivor Series because nobody wants to be on Monday Night Raw. The worst brand in WWE. Just saying. I don't care about I don't care about Monday Night Raw. You, you think because I watch this show every week that I should care about Survivor Series? Which, which has nothing in return? Why are SmackDown and Raw fighting? They have not explained that yet. And we're, we're now five days away from Survivor Series. We have no explanation. Why are these two brands fighting? To see who's the best. That's not a reason to fight. Is there anything on the line? Like picks in a superstar shakeup or draft picks. You know, trades. You can trade with the brand if you win. Give us something. Like, literally, what's on the line? Nothing. At least Bragging Rights had a trophy on the line. You know, that's something. Raw and SmackDown are fighting because they're fighting. Fans have said, oh, because of Shane McMahon. He, wanted, he stole a World Cup for SmackDown Live. He, uh, he, he did that so a Raw Superstar that does not win. Okay, that's a good explanation. Why haven't they said that? Then we'll have a reason why they're fighting. Because of Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon is the reason why Raw's going to SmackDown. But there's no reason why they're fighting. Because it's just because it's Survivor Series. Okay, good job, WWE. At least 
I would explain that while we're fighting to begin with. Just saying. Stephanie said, okay, I already wrote that already. The Royal Commissioner responded that and said that if he leads Raw to victory Sunday night, he can have whatever he wants. So if Strowman uh, beats Team SmackDown, Strowman could probably fight Brock Lesnar again. He demanded a against Universal Champion Brock Lesnar and a bout with Corbin. Stephanie said, deal to both, but first, Strowman has to prove he is a team player at Survivor Series. Okay, this is smart. Because it explains the motivation of why Strowman will help Team Monday Night Raw to benefit himself and to and, and to get a Universal Championship shot and deal with Baron Corbin after Survivor Series. That is very smart. I like that by WWE. That's the only bright spot of this promo. That's it. Then uh, next was Ronda Rousey, who said there was nothing Stephanie could do to make her to to mot- that could motivate her to beat Becky Lynch. More than she already is. Corbin interrupted the proceedings and she and said he was he is with Stephanie and they need to motivate Raw to beat Shane at Survivor Series. The acting Raw GM or the acting garbage GM uh, slowly entered the ring cautious of an angry strongman. He made the mistake of saying Rousey was too overconfident to which she responded by hip tossing him. She exited and Strowman came face to face with Corbin promising to neuter him after Survivor Series. This was a, actually a real strong way to kick and kick off the show. Not only did it set up literally weeks of television in the form of Strowman's war against Corbin and Lester, it also set up Rousey as an enemy of the general manager since WrestleMania and her war with Triple H and Stephanie. She has remained out of the authority storyline, putting her back in it ahead of WrestleMania season is a wise move that will elevate the, the, the significance of whatever it is she has she, 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 she does at the event. It also allowed her to cut a short, sweet, intense promo that put her over high profile bout with Lynch. Good stuff from a brand that has not exactly been synonymous with good television in the way. Good job, WWE. You actually kicked off Raw. Very good. But I just went down here from here. Ember Moon versus Tamina. Tamina defeated Ember Moon here. I don't give two craps. Tamina is Tamina. Do I care? No. I don't. Moon did, did a ton of work here, but the match nearly hit, he really hit his stool, hit his stride, thanks in larger part to an ill-timed commercial break. It was needed to put over the buddy rivalry between Moon and Jax, and it did that. Unfortunately, it just never felt like something fans could sink their teeth into or get excited for. I don't care. I, I really don't care. To this point, I don't care. You, you, have, you have ruined my favorite superstar from NXT, Ember Moon, good job WWE. You ruined her. I I I I don't care. I don't care about this Jack storyline. Just get just get it over with. I don't care. Then finally something. Then after that miserable match we had to sit through, Corey Grace interviews Seth Rollins. Grace int- introduced Rollins to the Square Circle and asked him about his normal state of state ahead of his match with SmackDown United States Champion Nakamura at Survivor Series. Rollins said. To be honest with you, I don't give a damn about Shinsuke Nakamura. Rollins said, "A lot, a lot, of, a lot, a lot of people are cursing him this, 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 this um, this week. I saying, I don't give a damn, don't give a crap." Uh, uh, Becky Lynch said the the almost she she almost said the uh she almost said the f word on live TV. Uh, I love the man. She's great. Uh, well, Rollins questioned Ambrose's manhood. Lucy fans appeared from backstage on the video screen and mocked everyone who has been looking for answers. He looked at the side the architect taking down on him and treating him like a imbecile. Ambrose said he is not remorseful for his actions. He used to think the shield made him strong, not anymore. It made him weak. The burden of watching Rollins made him weak. Ambrose threw his time to Jackson get the tactical deal he wore and as the other junctions in the fire. Where was this WWE creative Ben team been the last three months? Where have they been? I, I really, really want. This is good storylines right here, bro. I like this. Raw started off great. That Moon and Jax match, I didn't care about, but this was great. Awesome. A strong promo for Ambrose who realized his own self work and made it how he understands how weak being part of the group made him and he's not ready to strike out and make, do something about it. Even if it makes him unpopular and dislike, even if it makes me to end the shield, a strong promo from Ambrose left things just vague enough 
to believe that their their motives action is explanatory enough to tie fans over the rest is revealed. There you go. McIntyre and Ziggler addressed the WWE Universe. Um, they talked about Kurt Angle, Finn Balor interrupted. You know, it, it was it was awesome. I enjoyed it. You know, I really love the freaking um the way the way WWE did the they, they, that they played Kurt Angle's music. You suck. The er, er, er. the 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 the, the, the scratch plate. I'm here to show the world. <laughs> That was great, man. I was like, oh, my God. WWE, you're savages. Oh, my God. I love that, man. That was awesome. I was like, they, 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 I was like, dang, I was like, dang, gonna do this. When that scratch hit, <clears throat> I'm here to show the world. <laughs> I love that, man. That was great. And this promo was not bad. I, I really enjoyed it. McIntyre thought if he coming across as he heartless as he ran as he ran down the legendary angle. He has all the tools of a star and promo work like that won't help him elevate any eyes of management. Balor was fine as the respected baby for standing up for his fellow war crush competitor while also comparing the man who attacked him a week ago. The biggest takeaway from the segment though was the manner in which Ziggler reacted to McIntyre volunteering him for a match. Could the British cockiness of the opposing Scott eventually cost him his partnership with the show off? That is worth keeping an eye on. That is what I'm going to be keeping an eye on for the next couple months. Because my WrestleMania match that I want could be happening. And that's Ziggler versus, Ziggler versus McIntyre for the Universal Championship. That's, that's what I want. I want, I, want, I want McIntyre to beat Lester at Royal Rumble and fight Dolph Ziggler at WrestleMania. That's, my, that's what I want. And we had Finn Balor versus Dolph Ziggler moments after. Again, not a bad match at all. Balor and Ziggler always tear it up when they fight each other. This was awesome as Balor defeated Ziggler here if, uh, in a manner that protects Dolph Ziggler and keeps Balor strong. I, and I really enjoyed how WWE did this match. Then the Wyatt Squad addressed the WWE Universe. I didn't give two craps about this. I don't care about the Wyatt Squad. And I don't care about this feud with Natalya and Natalya. I, I don't. I really don't care. And it, this was a complete... Waste of time for me. I don't care. They've been doing this for weeks. Who cares? Then we had the Tag Team Battle Royal Take 2. Again, did not give two craps about this. It was a complete waste of everybody's time. Like, why are you crying Team Captain for Survivor Series? They, 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 they're going to do nothing. This was just time filler that nobody cared about. Gable and Rude won the Battle Royal. Do you care? Of course you don't. What's, is it going to make Survivor Series more special with the tag team? No. It's going to be like, okay, they're team captains. So what? Well, what did they get? A medal? Nothing. Who cares? Brock Lesnar returns to Raw. Again, I don't care about Brock Lesnar as a Universal Champion, but I love Lesnar versus Styles as a Survivor Series. I like how WWE did that. Even though I would have had Braun Strowman as Universal Champion, Lester and Styles, they tore it up last year. And I expect the same thing from, from them this year. Just saying. And Paul Heyman, with that guy's dog on promo, oh my God. <laughs> Paul Heyman is the freaking beast, man. This guy is awesome. <laughs> I love how he, I love how he, I love how he said the B word to the fans. That was great. <laughs> Surge it up your own self. <laughs> that was great, man. I, I love that. That was awesome. Other than that, your standard Brock Lesnar promo. Paul Heyman was great. What more can I say? Elias versus Bobby Trashley once again. Wait, they did it. I'm sorry. They, 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 they haven't fought before. But they, but but they, but they did fart, um, you know, um, a cu a couple months ago, you know. So whatever. Lashley, 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 and Leo Rush's voice defeated Elias via countout. Um, I like how WWE protected Elias here and then pin him, and I like how they did they would this with the Bobby Roode thing that Bobby Roode would do whatever it takes to win. He doesn't care about winning via countout or pinfall. That's a classic heel. I like it. Good job, WWE. Even though I didn't care about the match, you made me care. And um, that's the good part. 
Alexa Bliss reveals the Survivor Series team for um the um Alexa Bliss reveals the Survivor Series team for the women. You know, whatever. We kind of seen, kind of seen what the way this was going. This team is garbage. This team is absolutely garbage. It really is. Natalia, Mickey James, Nia Jackson, to me, is nothing. So you're telling me you're gonna leave Bailey and Sasha, both of them off, and and, and and only give one spot to one of them? Are you kidding me? Seriously, this team is garbage. I would have gotten rid of. Nia Jax and to me it's nothing. Why and why is Jax there? Jax does not need to be fighting at Survivor Series. And she already done the number one contender. And what's Tamia doing there? I mean she beat Natalia. Or whoever she beat earlier tonight. Who cares? They should say Tamina and Jax for the Rousey storyline after Survivor Series as we head towards TLC. But who cares about them being in this match? I don't. You could have easily did Natalia, Mickey, Bailey, Sasha. That's the perfect team. And then you could have maybe added Tamina or Naya for the fifth member. But this team is garbage. And I and 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 I now hope Team SmackDown wins. I really do. This accomplished nothing that a Braxton promo could not have. This is typically Star Trek and right under center to be here. And the creative team came up with nothing interesting to help elevate the segment. Trash. But the thing that wasn't trash was this. Bailey versus Sasha, the main event. It ended in no contest as the SmackDown stars raided Monday Night Raw. As the man, Becky Lynch, was the ring leader. All right, Night Raw did a fine job of putting the emphasis on survival sessions to draw me up the interest in the show. It put on a hell of an exclamation point and it on the proceedings with this angle. Lynch intense, intense, and instantly brought energy and intensity and her attack complete with a bloody nose hammered home the combination and fury between the teams. The crowd popped big time for the man, my girl, um, suggesting she may be the hottest star in all WWE right now. The brawl was well done. Roger was genuinely pissed and suddenly WWE has a high profile match that can easily headlines Sunday Spectacular. A great episode of Raw Max maxed up, wrapped up with a extraordinary angle. I wouldn't say a great episode of Raw, but it was good. Not a bad episode of Raw. I enjoyed it. It was okay. You know, it built towards Survivor Series nicely. Even though there were some things I didn't give two craps about, it still built towards Survivor Series nicely. Good job, WWE. Hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you guys think of Monday Night Raw and everything we've seen. Hit the like button, subscribe to them down below, and I'm see you guys for my Universe Mode Raw after. Hell in a cell. Talk to y'all there.